Hello, 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 everybody. It's your girl, Stevie Aisha Mills, and I am the I Love My Life strategist. I help women push past their past so that they can loudly and proudly declare I love my life. And I know you guys who have been listening to my show know that we have a live event called Experience. We have been to Virginia. We have been to um, Maryland, we have been to Pennsylvania, and now coming up is Experience Atlanta. Get excited, get excited. And so I have one of our dynamic sponsors with us today. Oh, my gosh, y'all, she is so phenomenal. When she reached out to me and I really got to read about who she is and what she does, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm excited that you're going to be with us. So without any further ado, what I want to do is to welcome author McCartney Green. So, McCartney, how are you doing today? Hi, Stevie. I am awesome. How are you doing? Absolutely phenomenal. Thank you for asking. And welcome to the conversation. The first thing I want you to tell people is really about who you are and what you do. You know, we know you're an author, but I know that there is a purpose and a power behind those books and behind the work that you utilize. So tell us all about it. I would love to do that. Um, I am an author and a speaker and a life coach, but the main thing I love doing is sharing my message of joy with people because I had an absolute real miracle happen in my life and uh, once that happened, it changed my life completely. I'm not sure if you want me to go into detail on what that's about. Do you want me to, to take care of that? Yes, ma'am. I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it, listen, it was, it was a time in my life that was really, really bad. My life was just falling apart. I'd been married 20 years. I had seven beautiful children. They were my absolute joy. But... Uh, after 20 years of marriage, we were absolutely destitute. My husband had lost his job. I was working three part-time jobs trying to keep food on the table and a roof over our heads. And With seven kids, you can imagine that the stress right there was just unbearable. But add to that, my, I knew that my hus- our, uh, our marriage was crumbling, and I knew it was about to end, and I felt very alone and confused and unloved. And then... I was sexually assaulted in a Wendy's parking lot, and I felt so bad about that that um, uh, because I didn't fight. You know, back then, at that time, I was I was a young woman. I was I was strong. I was I was an athlete, and I just thought anybody that ever tried to hurt me, I'd kick their butts. You know, but that's not how it happened. I froze in fear, and so the pain of feeling so much guilt and shame was almost worse than what happened. And somehow, within all that emotional turmoil, I convinced myself that the world and my children would be better off without me, and I actually tried to take my own life. Now, thank God, I failed, but. Uh, shortly thereafter, within this uh, small time frame, I woke up one morning and there was an actual man standing at the foot of my bed. And, you know, normally you would scream and, and be terrified, but this, this man I knew immediately, I had a knowing that this was some sort of heavenly messenger. And he spoke to me and he counseled me. He had light all around him and he, he had love emanating from him. And he spoke to me and he counseled me and he set me on a road to begin writing. He told me the, the three things he said were, write your story, write love, begin immediately. And that's exactly what I did. And... Um, it, it took me a long time. I am a, I'm a very slow learner. It took me a long time to figure out what my real path was because the first books I wrote were all fiction, but I wrote about women who, like, like myself who were having a hard time and needed to overcome all these amazing obstacles, and I used real women's uh, problems and traumas that they've been through to write about in my fiction novels, and then I realized I can, I can help these people in a fiction novel. I can actually help people in real life. And for a long time, he, he didn't come back to me, this messenger. But after 22 years, he did. He finally came back to me in my life, and he directed me to start 
with this nonfiction books and to write those and to teach people joy because everybody in the world is so sad and so unhappy and so stressed and so fatigued and so full of misery. And if everyone in the world lived in joy, um, they would... They, there would be no room for anger or hatred or envy or fear or even wars. There would just be joy and prosperity and love. And he gave me seven keys to teach to everyone. And that's what I'm all about now As I go around sharing my message of joy and teaching anyone, no matter what their situation, that no matter what traumas they've been through, that they can have absolute joy. They can wake up in the morning with a smile on their face, joy in their heart, tons of energy, and raring to go. That's my goal. Wow. That's powerful. <laughs> All of that is powerful in and of itself. And it's amazing when people utilize um, their pain. You know, part of my mantra and what I do for my life is to help women push past their pain. And so I'm very excited about the work that you do because, it is something when you you've been um, assaulted, molested, raped. Those are things in which you feel powerless, you know. And I know firsthand about that. And I want to really know how you define joy. And I want to just really delve into how did you first just decide that you were not gonna you're gonna not throw the pity party anymore, but you were gonna stand up and be joyful because that's that's a part of taking back, back your power as well. You are so right, Stevie. That is a huge, huge part. Um, when I first began to write and I felt like I was being led as I even wrote those fiction novels, one of the main things, oh, by the way, I based the hero in my fiction stories on the man that I had seen in my bedroom. And um, so he was like my hero, but he was also felt like he was leading me as I was writing. And his big motto, Stevie, is just exactly what you said. His motto is, we are only victims if we allow ourselves to be. Wow. And uh and, and, and that's so, so true. Um, and uh, in my first book, you know, the, the, the first book, of course, I wrote what I knew. I wrote myself. I wrote about, wrote about a woman who had been uh, raped and, and the trauma and how she was having a hard time overcoming it and, um, and, you know, living in fear every day and those types of things. But no matter what, every trauma can be overcome. And as I wrote all those books, you know, and then finally changed over to actually helping people to find their joy, uh, it, it, was, it was just amazing that the keys that he gave me, how easy they are, how simple they are. But you, you wanted me to define joy, and, and I call – well, I call it unshakable joy, but what I really like to call it is joy for no reason. And that is, what I mean by that is not joy because you just landed a sweet new job and not joy because your boyfriend just proposed and not joy because you lost 50 pounds or even not joy because you won the lottery, but joy for no reason because true joy cannot depend on outside circumstances. If it, if it did, we'd be at the whim of whatever life brings our way. True joy is unshakable, and, and anyone can have it no matter what they've been through. And really what he taught me is true joy actually comes from spiritual connection, from the connection to the divine and to the infinite. Whichever, whatever people of any religion want to call it, it doesn't matter. He just knows. He just taught me that it doesn't matter as long as we connect to God however way we can. Wow. Wow. You're right about it. I think happiness is fleeting, but joy is everlasting. That's what I believe. And um, so you are true. You are true about that. And let's talk about the seven keys. Is it seven keys? Yes. Yes, it and is. Seven keys. Seven is the number of completion um, in biblical numbers. But let, so that's powerful. Let's talk about them. What are they? Oh, oh well, here's here's the list. Of course, they each have an explanation, but the first they're all okay, so easy. Okay, the book, the explanation, but just tell us. <laughs> okay. And I'll just say they're going to sound easy, too easy, and and that's one of the problems I'm having is people think they're so easy they're not important to do, you know, because it's mostly we want things to be hard and then we think that they're more important. But these are so easy. He gave them to me. To me, he told me that simplicity is the best. So here they are. Number one is to be an observer of your own thoughts. 
Number two is actually a physical thing. It's to make sure your body is hydrated and that you stretch it. Stretch. Just stretch. And it doesn't have to be a full yoga class. Just stretch. Number three is one of the hardest ones. It's to let go. Uh, everyone wants to be in such control of their life, but we have to let go. Um, number four is pulling light, which is a technique that I love to teach, and I'll, I'll teach it when I'm, when I'm there in Atlanta. But um, pulling light, it's like a light, light meditation. You pull the light of God, the light of Christ, the light of source, whatever, whoever wants to call it. You pull it through your body, and it only takes two seconds, kind of like an ice bucket challenge, only with light. <laughs> um, number five is uh, prayer and meditation, both. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Number six is to align spiritually uh, with God through high vibration and gratitude. And number seven is to pay attention because we miss the signs. We miss the signs, and uh, they're all around us. You know, in the Bible they say that um, do not ask for a sign, but, but he told me that's actually not true because we are um, – he, they, they send us signs. He sends us signs every day, signs that show that he's there, that he loves us, that, that things are being, you know, magically working behind the scenes for our benefit. So that's it. All seven keys, very easy, and they only take a few seconds. And um, I know it's going to sound like, and it's powerful because you, this, I had a two, two thoughts at one time. Um, it's powerful because you say you have seven kids, right? I do. And 13 wow. grandchildren. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, let's talk about which one of these would you say resonates with you the most, if you could pick one? As well, they all they all resonate with me, but I think two of them are the most important. Actually, one of them is the most important. And that is the pulling of light. Because he told me this, where there is light, there can be no darkness. Pull light through your body. Pull the light of God through your body. All you have to do is see it coming from, from the heavens or coming from him, whichever, whatever makes people feel the most comfortable. And just a big flush of, flash of light, a whoosh of light within two seconds, you just say, I call upon the light of God and it comes through us. It just soaks our body with light and pushes out any darkness. It can change your mood if you're depressed. It can change if you're angry. It can change the whole situation if you're having a fight at work with your boss. Whatever you do, you just put light around that, just a whoosh of light, just every time you think about it. It only takes two seconds. And it if everybody in the world were pulling that light whenever whenever they needed to, several times a day, it would fill the world with light, and there would just be no more darkness. It would just be beautiful. It would change the world. Wow. What a beautiful thought that is. That's beautiful. That is beautiful and powerful. And so um, how are the women who you serve, like, how do they normally come to you, and what is your ideal, or men, if you serve men too, I always think in women because I serve primarily women, but um, <laughs> the people who you serve, how do they normally come to you, and what would you say is your quote, unquote, ideal client? You know, I try to draw people to me naturally in an organic type of way, but I, you know, I, I use social media and those types of things. And I, I cater to both men and women, but women are the ones that, that usually trust another woman the most. And so I, I would say my ideal co- client is a woman. And it can be a woman at any age, even teenagers, because people have been through so many traumas. And women are stressed out. They're fatigued. They're, they're um, pulled in so many different directions. And they feel trapped sometimes. And they feel like they just don't know how they can get out of the situation they're in. But it doesn't matter. You can, what, here's, the, here's the thing. When you practice the seven keys that are so easy to practice, the happiness just, you start becoming so aligned with God's energy that the happiness just comes regardless of your situation. And then here's the cool, delicious side effect. 
once you start living, feeling that joy and living in joy, all of a sudden you become a manifesting magnet, meaning all of a sudden you can finally make the law of attraction work. All of a sudden you are pulling to you all the things that your heart desires. It doesn't happen by trying to focus on your heart's desires and then trying to be happy about it, knowing that they're not even there yet. Because remember, happiness can't depend on what you want. I like to say um, uh, getting what you want doesn't necessarily make you happy, but being happy does get you what you want. Because when you're living in absolute joy and when none of, nothing else really matters to make you happy, all of a sudden everything that you ever wanted starts coming to you anyway. So that's... That's my main uh, goal is to help women and men, um, especially if they've been through a trauma or something that is making them, you know, they're depressed or they're sad or they're, they're breaking up with their husband or they've, they've you know, suffering from PTSD, um, anything like that. Teach them these, these keys and how to help them to be absolutely joyous, waking up every day in joy, and then all of a sudden their life will change. Wow, it is truly a um, lot of people who are just not happy these days. You know, it's it's very much the fact that people just really don't see um, an end to the means and just being depressed and just being um, really scared and really don't know where to go next. What do you think the reason behind that is? You know, when people are <clears throat> when people are scared and depressed, and they they get sort of closed into a, a, a cycle or a, a rut, you know, where as long as, as as nothing will change, as long as they believe nothing will change, um, it's only when they take the actions. <clears throat> excuse me. And um, you just reminded me of something, and that is, you know, these people who are going through these things they actually have to make a choice and they have to choose to be happy because happiness is a choice. And whenever I tell people that, it always pisses them off. They always get mad at me. Don't you think I want to be happy? And uh-huh. I said, yes. <laughs> yes, I do think you want to be happy. I said, but there's a difference between wanting to be happy and choosing to be happy. And uh-huh. if you make the choice, then that means you will – that doesn't mean just suddenly you'll be happy, but it means if you make the choice, then you will take – the steps that are necessary to find that happiness. And my steps are really, really simple and easy. Um, but, but you have to choose. And you said something else, Stevie, and I think you are on the same page in so many ways. But um, you said something else, and that was um, uh, it was about people, everybody wants to be happy. And, you know, I was – I was realizing as I've been through this last year talking with so many people and so many clients that I've worked with, a lot of people don't want to be happy. They want to be what you talked about at the very beginning of this interview, and that was they, they want to be victims. That's how they identify. And we, we lots of times identify with being a victim, and when we let go of that, we don't know who we are. So it's quite a step to choose. I am not going to be a victim anymore. I am going to choose happiness. Yeah. And you have to stand up in your power and really understand what it means to um, to say that because it's not always easy. You know, when you have been in a place where things, negativity, you know, wrong connections, keep playing in your mind, it's, it's kind of, unless you get in a great circle of people, it's not easy to say, I'm going to um, break free from this, you know, because there are people who just are like, I, I've heard it said, and I talk about it some way in my book, about your basement people who continually pull you down, you know, so... Yeah. Um, I think that we just need more people to um, hear your message because the things that you have been through truly could have kept you bound, but um, they didn't, thank God. So what, as we begin, we only have about 12 more minutes, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> as we begin wow. to to wind down on this conversation, 
Let's talk about some of the things that you're like, Stevie, we cannot leave this conversation today without uncovering this. Wow. Well, l- let me let me say this one thing. I'll tell you a little bit more about me. Because because I don't want to feel like, oh, I, I didn't let these things keep me bound. But actually, they kept me bound for a long time. I, you know, I, I'm totally honest. I believe in being absolute and totally honest. And so I have to say, I was born into poverty, alcoholism, abuse, neglect, and hunger. I was, we were always so hungry. And things were really bad for me as a child. And then I grew up and I got married and nothing changed. And the reason nothing changed is I had never been told that anything could be any different. I accepted, oh, so this is life. Life is just like this. It's just difficult. It's just hard. Life will always be like this. It never occurred to me that there was a way out of my situation. I thought life was just always going to be hard and miserable. And sure enough, since I expected that, that's exactly what I got throughout my married life. Uh, with the seven sunshines who were my children that brought me joy, but I didn't believe it. It was, I think that angel that visited me, I, or divine being, or whatever you want to call him, I think we, he and I had a pact before I came to earth. And he said, look, if you don't figure things out by the time you're 40 years old, I'm going to come down there and knock you upside the head. So I think that's why I got visited. It wasn't because I was special. But something had to happen to let me know that there is a way out. And, and that's what I want everyone else to know, that you really can be happy, that there is a way out of your misery and your depression. Life doesn't have to be bad. And, and we need to stop saying things, you know, the Murphy's Law type things that people talk about, what, what, whatever bad will, you know, can go wrong, will go wrong type thing. As long as we continue to believe that and say that and think that, and that's what will happen. Or maybe we just need to wake people up and, you know, there's so many women. Let me just say this. Uh, at one point in my life, I was a McDonald's manager, and one of the employees there, this sweet, sweet girl, um, tall and thin, I think she was from Ethiopia, but she was just beautiful, but she had no idea that it was not acceptable that her husband beat her. She, I, you know, I would go and pick her up and bring her to work, and she had bruises on her body, and she'd tell me why. She'd tell me why, like, oh, that's just the way it is. And it took everything I had to convince her and to make her understand that, no, life doesn't have to be that way. You can get out of this situation. And I think just no matter what our problems are, sometimes we don't even realize it. It doesn't have to be this way. There is a difference. There is a light. And all we have to do is make the decision that we're going to go after that light. So that's what I want everybody to know, that it's just possible. Everything is possible. Wake up and connect spiritually, and that makes anything possible. True, true story. I um, I think life is really about perception, 99.999 perception, <laughs> because we have a choice in whatever we feel like life is going to do to us or it's all about how we respond to it. You know, we make a choice. I don't know if you remember Choose Your Own Adventure books, but I remember them from my childhood. And if you turn to one page, you go to a whole different story. And to me, that's what yeah. life is all about, um, really understanding that some things are meant to teach us and some things are meant to stretch us and some things are meant to bring us joy. But it, I, my favorite quote that God gave me is that, um, God has already written the bi- biography. All we have to, to do is continually turn the pages. And so for me, when I heard that, I was like, okay, well, whatever. I'll just keep turning these pages until we see what <laughs> the right. going to be. So it, it takes yeah. off the stress and it takes off the, um, you know, the things that can happen. I know I've had my own bout with stress and um, depression and all kinds of different things. And so when you understand that, Really, there's no competition in life. We all have truly just our own paths to carve out, and whatever makes somebody else 
happy, we should celebrate that inside of them, and whatever makes us happy or joyful, we should celebrate that with inside of us. And I think people, like you, you were saying earlier, I think we make life too hard. It's not that hard, but we spend a lot of time really trying to figure it out. You know, we don't want to be the odd man or woman out. We don't want to be um, seeming like we don't have it or can't get it together. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's just very much the fact that if we understand and learn that God is already done. Whatever is going to happen is already done. It's already known about, and we just have to live life. When we live life and we um, come to the realization of that, then we can absolutely loudly and proudly declare, I love my life. (laughs) And so I want to ask you, you know, um, experience is coming up, and I'm excited that you are going to be one of our speakers and you are sponsoring. Um, I want to know, what can people look forward to at Experience from you, and why are you excited about Experience? I am so excited always to get in front of people and to feel their vibration and to feel their energy and to give them my energy and to, and to bless them with as much love and joy as I can. So I will, I will be there. I will be leading them through the steps of joy. And I, I, I'm expecting every single person that, that, I, that is there that I speak to, I'm expecting it to change their lives. That's what I, that's what I want, for the better. Change their lives for the better. And, and like you say, you know, just turn the page. Or just take the next step. That's all. That's all they have to do is just take one step. You don't have to know what's coming. You know, you don't have to know it all. You just have to take just the very next step, and that's it. And it will change their lives. And I, I'm just so excited to, to. I'm always excited to actually be interacting with people in person. There's such an energy. There's such a vibrancy, and I just, I just love their energy, and I love to share my love with them. Yes, yes, yes. You're right about it. And that's. That's why we're getting out into the world this year. Um, And it's funny because the conversation really is where experience started. I I tell people all the time, I was um, speaking to, her name is Pastor Cassandra Elliott, and she was on the conversation, and we were live and in living color, and, and the Lord just downloaded into my mind that, you know, to do a live event. Right, and so we're like, okay, because I usually do something. Um, this was the last one was in December. Um, I usually do something in that month just to get people ready for next the next year. And so live and in living color, I was like, okay, this is what <laughs> the Lord is saying to me. And I just I didn't have time to ask her um, before because that's not when I got it. Before I asked her directly on the line. And then I was inboxing um, a lady who who I grew up with, who's actually a pastor, and asked her, can we use her church to do it? And that's where that came from. And so all this happened, and we didn't even have a name. <laughs> we didn't have wow. a name for this. And so it you just took went the on step. a couple of days. <laughs> what did you say? I said, you just took the step. You just yeah, took Yeah, I took that, the you step. Know, exactly. I really did. It kind of had everybody else take it with me. And so we um, we just experience came a couple of days later, and I was like, at first it was I couldn't. People say the experience, and I was like, no, that's not how how it was downloaded. Experience was like an action work with an exclamation point behind it. So that's what it's called. But this was really um, December, sometime in December. I think we just got together, and that's how it started. And it was supposed to be that one night, and now it's in, um, you know, four states this year. And next year, it's going to be a next year in 2018. So it's amazing how things happen because I surely was not, that was not my plan. And so I said that to say, you know, you've got to continue taking the steps. You've got to continue turning the pages because you never know where the path is going to take you. You know, we didn't have experience. You and I wouldn't have connected. So exactly. it's just it's just amazing. You never know what life is going to bring. So you, I want you know to, what, Stevie? Go ahead. I was gonna I just gonna say, Stevie, you know what? You it's so beautiful what you did. It's so important 
to let everybody know what you did, and that is you you got that that God download that's and the idea, and you didn't sit on it, you acted on it. That's so important, and it's such a beautiful thing that you did. I just wanted to say that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am um, it's just amazing. I'm just thankful for people like you, you know, who really saw the vision and said, I want to help you. Like, that's, that in itself is just what I lay down at night and say my prayers, I say it for everybody, that they will um, expo- exponentially get everything that they desire and that the people who are connected to them, that they will begin to really um, be magnetically attractive. And that's what you were talking about a little while ago when you were saying um, you just really put it out and, and the clients come. And that's why I train people to be magnetically attractive because either people are going to be attracted or they're going to repel just like a magnet. And so that was amazing that you said that. So we are wrapping up. I want to give you the opportunity to do two things, say any lasting words that you have. And I also want to um, have you give your contact information. Okay. Well, let me just say this. Everything is possible. If whoever's listening to this podcast, take a moment to pull light through your body, the light of God, the light of source energy, the light of the creator, the light of Christ, whatever you want to call it. Pull that light through your body. See it coming through the heavens. See it wishing through your body, sort of like the ice bucket challenge, except instead of over your body, it's through and around your body, and it cleanses you of any darkness. Practice that. Do it. You'll begin to actually feel it because whenever you visualize something, it's actually happening. It's doing it. And if you'll do that, it will change your life. And I would absolutely love for everyone to um, contact me uh, at go to McCartneyGreen.com. That's my website. And if you have any questions, um, there's a little thing on my website that says Let's Talk. And this is free, and I don't try to sell you anything. I just want to talk to you and find out what I can do to help you or to serve you. And also, if you email me right now, because I don't have my autoresponder went under, so um, it's not working. But if you'll email me with free gift in the subject line, I will send you a free gift of the seven keys and all the explanation of them so that you can begin to work. Because the, I, my main goal is for everyone in this world to have absolute joy. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, again, I want to thank you, McCartney, for stopping by to have have a conversation with us. Um, It was absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My pleasure. Yes, yes, yes. We cannot wait to see you in Atlanta in Atlanta, September 22nd from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Residence in Midtown. And more details to come. If you need to know any details, if you need to register, everyone, it is absolutely, um, I would say priceless. I try not to say free, but people resonate with free. I say priceless. (laughs) Um, It is, uh, no, we're not asking for money. We're just asking you to show up. And you can register at stevie.com slash experience, stevie.com slash experience, and tell all of your phenomenal friends to be there with you because it's going to be absolutely great. I cannot wait to be there um, and see what's going to happen. There's nothing like experience. In each and every city, state, we've, it's all been different. So we don't know what's going to happen in Atlanta, but we are expecting, Right. And so we will see you soon. If you ever need anything from me, all you have to know is to spell my first name, S-T-E-V-I-I, and you can find me on social media. You can find me at stevie.com. You can find me wherever you need me to be. (laughs) And, again, I am telling you guys, I never say have a great day. I always say make it a great day. Why? Because you, 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 and, yes, you have the power to do so. Talk to you later. Bye.